Welcome back to the Mech Tech Tech. Today we have a custom commander build for you from Duskmorn, featuring Arabella Abandoned Doll, requested by RS Nublord. RS Nublord, you rock. So, who is Arabella? Well, Arabella is a Boros commander. Just a two pieces of Boros mana is going to get us a 1 3 legendary artifact creature toy. Whenever they attack, they're going to deal X damage to each opponent, where X is the number of creatures we control with power two or less. So notable that they themselves have power two or less, so they're gonna always trigger for at least that one bit of damage. But we're hoping to really increase that, you know, amount of damage each time we attack by generating a ton of little tokens, as well as finding various ways of protecting our commander. Because although that three booty is fine in the early game, once you hit kind of like mid to late game, you know, multiple creatures are gonna easily just like sort of swat her out of the way. We don't want that, we want her to survive and to attack every single turn. Let's get into that token generation. Our first piece of token tech is Elspeth Sun's Champion. For six mana, we have a four loyalty planeswalker who could plus one to generate us three soldiers, minus three to wipe out any of those big old boys that we aren't trying to mess with. Or if we got to minus seven, and we had a very large field, you know, we could theoretically go ahead and create an emblem that's gonna give all of our creatures plus two, plus two flying. It would certainly turn off our main commander's, you know, win con, but with a big enough field of tiny creatures, it could be a way to finish out the game. Adeline Resplendent Cathar, three cost, X4, X being equal to the number of creatures you control, so always at least equal to that one. They are also vigilant, and whenever we attack, not necessarily with Adeline themselves, but just in general, we're going to create a 1-1 creature that is tapped and attacking for each opponent we have. Ideally, those creatures live, but if they don't, they were still here for Arabella to do a little extra damage to each opponent. In a similar spot, we have Anim Pakal Thousandth Moon. Anim Pakal is three mana of the Boros variety, one generic, one set of Boros, they are a 1-2. Whenever we attack, again, not necessarily with an Impacal, we're gonna give them a plus one, plus one counter. Then we're gonna create a number of attacking gnomes that are all 1-1s one equal to the number of counters on them. So starts off slow, but pretty quickly ramps up for us. Again, not all those gnomes are necessarily going to live, but that's okay. They were here for the turn and they do stop Arabella. Emeria Angel. So four costs, three, three flyer. So not helping Arabella directly on their own, but they do have landfall generate a one, one flying white bird. So, you know, one a turn. We don't have a lot of land ramp in this deck because, well, we're just not green, but I think that the flying birds are still pretty solid for us. Jacked Rabbit follows that up. So Jack Rabbit is X one and a white. They are a one two naturally, but they are going to enter with X plus one plus one counters. If X is five or more, we do get to draw a card. So it's pretty nice. But more importantly, whenever the Jack Rabbit attacks, we will create a number of one one rabbits equal to the power of the Jack Rabbit. So normally we aren't trying to have a big beefy boy out on the field, but I think the Jack Rabbit is an exception here. Krenko Mob Boss. So this is the first of our Goblin support. We do have a little bit more coming, but you know them, you love them. They're not gonna initially help Arabella because they are a three, three for four mana, but we can tap them to create X Goblins where X is the number of Goblins we already control. So gonna snowball pretty quickly and, you know, really give us a bunch of chump blockers and you know, I think these goblins are going to go a long way, especially with Krenko, Tin Street, Kingpin. So the the Kingpin is actually going to help us out immediately uh, because they're just a one, two for three. Now, when they attack, they are going to get a plus one, plus one counter. So they're going to pretty quickly phase out of being within range of helping Arabella deal damage. But they're also going to create a number of one, one goblins equal to their power. So... They definitely replace the fact that they're getting bigger with a bunch of little weenies to help Arabella. Following up the Kingpin, we have a Loyal Apprentice. So Loyal Apprentice is two mana, 
2-1, haste. We don't really care about that haste all that much, but it could be relevant if you wanted to get a little bit of extra ship damage. More importantly, they have Lieutenant. So beginning of combat, if we have them and our commander, we're gonna create a 1-1 Thopter. That Thopter gains haste for the turn. And the fact that it's a 1-1 means Arabella is gonna deal a little bit of extra damage from it. Moving down into more Goblin support, we're rocking the Siege Gang Commander. So a five cost, two, two, that will generate us three goblins when it enters, each of which is a one, one. So it's four new bodies for five mana that are each going to deal extra damage from the Arabella attacks. In a similar spot, honestly, a little better in my mind, we have the Siege Gang Lieutenant. So one less mana, two, two, loving this. Beginning of combat, if we control our commander and the Lieutenant, we're going to go ahead and create two 1-1 one, one goblins. So, yes, it's one less goblin, but by the very next turn, assuming they're both still in the field, we're really up a goblin. So, both of the Siege Gangs are great. The Jelly Balloon Man follows them up. So, Jelly Balloon Man is phenomenal here. Three mana, one Naboros, gives you a 1-4 Hasty Boy, who we could pay one and tap to create a token that's a copy of another creature we control. Only that creature is a 1-1 balloon in addition to its other types that flies. So this is great for really any of our Siege Gang stuff. We have a couple other creatures that like aren't legendary, so they have a lot of benefit from being around for even just a turn. And the Jelly Balloon Man and his balloon are going to power up Arabella. Moving down into some spell slinging, we have Dragon Fodder. So two mana, two goblins, right? Pretty simple. Finale of Glory. X and two white creates us X two two white soldiers. If X happens to be over 10, instead we're gonna create that many four four flying vigilant angels. Both modes are good. Obviously the angels are gonna deal a lot of damage on their own. The soldiers are okay in terms of like swinging out if they really wanted to in large numbers, but they're really here to power up Arabella. Marshall Koo follows that up. Same cost, but instead generates you one one soldiers but if X is over five, we're gonna destroy all other creatures. As I mentioned earlier, we do have ways of protecting our commander, so we don't necessarily mind wiping the field if we have to, but it's really here for this token gen. Song of Totentans. X and a red create X black rats, which can't block, but gain haste. So again, just a nice big mana sink to be like, hey, look at all these rats. Now I attack and I deal effectively, you know, early game, three times as much damage as I put into creating these rats because I'm hitting each opponent. Tempt with bunnies. So Tempt with bunnies is great. It's three mana. We're going to draw a card and create a bunny. We're going to allow each opponent to choose that they would also like to do so. For each one that does, we're going to create another bunny and draw another card, keeping our hand full and our field full of little 1-1 one -one bunnies, which helps out our commander. White Sun's Twilight. So this goes back to the same mana cost as our Finale of Glory and our Martial Coup. Instead of creating those type of creatures though, we are creating Phyrexian Mites, but just like Martial Coup, if X is over five, we're gonna destroy all other creatures. Call the Copper Coats. We moved into instant speed and we could strive this, which is effectively a kicker I don't know why they didn't just call a kicker, but that's fine. For three mana, we get to choose an opponent and create X, one, one human soldiers, where X is the number of creatures they control. For an extra one in a white, as many times as we see fit, we get to choose another opponent and basically just do the same thing. So a good way, if you're coming across someone else who's playing a kind of go wide strat to really fill your field quick. So, Secure the Waste. Secure the Waste is X and a white. We're gonna create X, one, one white warrior creature tokens. The fact that we can do it at instant speed means we could create them as blockers to save ourselves from a would-be deadly attack. Or, if we just have mana left over at the end of the turn, right? For some reason, we didn't wanna put them out right away. Maybe we had some other things we wanted to bluff. We can get them out at our opponent's end step. Bam, they're on the field. Untap all of our mana you know, swing for the fences. Following that up, we have White Sun's Zenith. X and triple white, so a little harder to cast, but we are gonna create X two two white cats and then shuffle it back into our library. 
so we could draw it and recast it later. Felidar Retreat. So, another landfall effect. It's one of the only two that we have in the entire deck, but it does create us a 2-2 cat, which we're here for. Again, if we're kind of like late game and we have a large field, we could do the second effect to give all of our creatures plus one, plus one counters, as well as Vigilance for the turn. Uh, but I don't think it's super necessary. Rabble Rousing. So Rabble Rousing is a five cost white enchantment with Hideaway five. So basically a little bit of card draw, a little card selection sort of process there. Whenever we attack, we get to create a number of citizen tokens equal to the number of creatures that we attacked with. If we have at least 10 creatures at that point, we get to play the Hideaway card for free. But we're really here for the effect that's just going to let us really spam creatures onto the field, letting us swing pretty freely. Skrill's Hive. So one white, beginning of upkeep, we're going to lose a life and create a might. And once someone's corrupted, our mites, or really any of our creatures that have toxic, but it's just the mites, are going to have lifelink. So pretty nice for us. After Scrolls Hive, we have one last card that's going to generate us a few boys, and that's Spiked Corridor slash Torture Pit. So both are great for us. The Spiked Corridor itself is going to unlock and generate us three 1-1 one, one red devils that when they die will ping a target for one. Pretty nice. And Torture Pit, once unlocked, is going to make it so if a source we control would deal non-combat damage, looking at both these devils that we've just created as well as our commander. Two extra damage per instance of non-combat damage. So, all in all, pretty strong. In addition to the non-combat damage that the Devils and our commander are doing, we do have a few other instances of it. And we could definitely up it if we really wanted to go that direction. Uh, but we do have the Molten Gatekeeper from Modern Horizons 3. So for three mana, we get a 2-3, which we could unearth for a single red mana. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under our control, we're going to deal one damage to each opponent. So that's bumped up to three with the Torture Chamber, as well as the Agate Instigator. Being a little bit more on the expensive side, it's just under 10 bucks over on TCG Player, but for two mana, we can get a 1-3. If we have four mana available, we could also Offspring it. But both instances of that creature are going to go ahead and deal one damage to each opponent each time a creature enters the battlefield. Let's go ahead and protect our commander, right? They're not that big. They could die pretty easily. And our whole deck's kind of built around, hey, <laughs> this doll needs to stick around. So starting off, we have the Mother of Runes. So for a single white, we have a 1-1, one, one, which is nice because it's going to also help Arabelle. And we could tap them to give the target creature again, Arabelle, protection from a color of our choice, really allowing them to get around blockers, to get around any kind of like targeted removal, things of that nature. Selfless Spirit. So Selfless Spirit is a flying 2-1 for 2. We could sacrifice them and give all of our creatures indestructible for the turn, which is pretty nice. Selfless Spirit works particularly well with the Jelly Balloon Man because we can create a token copy of the Selfless Spirit immediately sacrifice it after we attack, getting our triggers off, and be like, cool, our entire board is safe, you can't do anything about it. Boros Charm. You know it, you love it. It goes in basically every Boros deck, and it's because Indestructible for the turn is good. Flawless Maneuver. Also a little on the expensive side, but TCG player has it sitting around like the $9 mark. If we control our commander, we could play it for free but it gives all of our creatures indestructible. And even if we don't have it, you know, our commander out, I'm willing to pay three mana for indestructibility for my field. Moving down into our artifacts, we have Brotherhood Regalia. So two mana, one to equip to a legendary, three otherwise, but we really want it for our, our doll here. Um, the equipped creature gains War 2, which is nice, is an assassin, which is whatever, but also can't be blocked, which is what we care about. In more hard to remove sort of stuff, we have Dark Steel Plate. So three mana, two to equip. The plate itself is indestructible. The equipped creature is indestructible. Along with the Hammer of Nazan, four mana, four to equip. But when it enters the battlefield under our control, we can immediately attach it. The equipped creature does get plus two, plus O, oh, and indestructible, so we are going to lose that one damage from 
uh, our commander being a little too powerful, but the indestructibility more than makes up for it in my mind. We're also rocking those Lightning Greaves to give them haste, which could be relevant, probably isn't, uh, but more importantly, Shroud. Moving down into our enchantments, we have the Gift of Immortality. So Gift of Immortality is three mana, goes onto the creature. Should the creature die, it comes back. And then at the end of the turn, the Gift of Immortality comes back. So it's a nice way of being like, hey, you need to remove this twice in a single turn. Otherwise, you're not really doing anything. Reconnaissance. So Reconnaissance is a nice way of being like, hey, for zero mana, I'm going to remove my commander from combat. But they still did attack. We got our trigger off, which is all we really care about. Shielded by faith. So one and two white. Creatures indestructible. Whenever a new creature enters, we could move the shield of faith around onto them, uh, which is less relevant than, you know, just the fact that they are indestructible, but still feels pretty good. And last of our, hey, don't touch my commander. We have Spirit Mantle. So for two mana, we get to enchant them, give them plus one, plus one, and pro creatures, which means you can't block them, right? We're just skating on by, we're dealing damage every turn, and it's a good time. Now, guys, while that's not the entire deck that is the main focus of the deck, we do have a little bit of other token support, a few ways of tutoring up some of these equipments that are going to help our commanders stick around longer. If you want to see the entire deck list, go ahead and click the link in the description. But a mechanized minion, the Energy King. If you enjoyed the video, felt like you got some value out of it. Enjoyed the fact that I got a lapel mic, so my sound quality should be much better. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, do all the algorithm things. If there's a custom commander from whatever the most recent set is at the time of recording, it's Duskmorn, that you'd like to see a custom build around, go ahead and leave a comment down below, and I'll try and make one for you. I always try and keep these decks pretty budget, where, like, no card is over $10, and most cards don't even come close within the deck. You know, there are a ton of cards that we could have added to it that are far over that price value, uh, they're actually listed in the considering section under the Moxfield deck list if you want to check those out. But until next time, good luck with your builds.